top Ukrainian general has said that Russian forces have been ousted from some positions in the city of Bakhmut. The city is witnessing fierce clashes. Russian forces have been trying to take over Bakhmut for 10 months now. Meanwhile, Russia launched missiles on Ukraine overnight. Two people were killed, while dozens of homes and buildings were damaged. The White House has estimated that more than 20,000 Russian soldiers have been killed in five months of fighting in Ukraine. More than 80,000 Russian soldiers have reportedly been injured. Most of the troops have been killed in Bakhmut. Half of those killed are reportedly from the Wagner mercenary group. More than 100,000 refugees have left Sudan for neighboring countries to escape the ongoing clashes. This is according to the United Nations. The UN earlier warned that around 800,000 people are likely to escape Sudan. This comes as clashes continue in the country despite a ceasefire. The UN has warned of a full-blown catastrophe in the country. Medics in Sudan have warned of a health crisis amid clashes. This comes as bodies are piling up on the streets of the capital Khartoum. People are drinking polluted water. There is a critical shortage of basic goods like food, water and fuel. U.S. President Joe Biden hosted the President of the Philippines, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. at the White House. The U.S. recommitted to a security pact with the Philippines. This comes as concerns grow over China's influence in the Indo-Pacific. A joint statement said that any attack on Philippines' armed forces or public vessels would trigger American defense commitments under a 1951 treaty. Japan and South Korea held their first bilateral finance leaders meeting in seven years. During the meeting, South Korea urged Japan to add it back to a white list of countries with fast-track trade status. This comes ahead of Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida's visit to South Korea next week. Kishida will meet South Korean President Yoon suk yeol Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh is in the Maldives. He met President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli in the capital, Mali. The two leaders discussed wide-ranging issues to further strengthen bilateral relations. Soli commissioned a new offshore patrol vessel gifted by the Indian government. Kenyan pastor Paul Mackenzie will face terrorism charges in the cult case. He's been in police custody since April 14th. The bodies of several children recovered show signs of starvation and asphyxiation. Authorities have conducted autopsies of nine children aged between 18 months to 10 years. Over a hundred bodies were recovered last month from shallow graves. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement has said that the Texas shooting suspect had been deported from the country four times since 2009. The shooting happened on April 28th. Five people were killed in the incident. The suspect is from Mexico. He was deported in March and September of 2009, January of 2012 and July of 2016 for different crimes. Authorities are still searching for the suspect. May Day protests were held across Latin America. In Chile, various trade unions took to the streets of the capital, Santiago. Chilean pol riot police used water cannons to disperse the protesters. In Argentina, activists held banners and chanted slogans at a rally in front of the presidential palace. They demanded an increase in the minimum wage. May Day protests in Paris turned violent. Protesters hurled fireworks and other projectiles during the clashes. One police officer was injured after he was struck by a petrol bomb. Violence also erupted in Lyon and Nantes. Some vehicles were set on fire. Nearly 200 people were arrested. The Canadian government has struck a deal with over 100,000 federal workers. This has ended the country's largest public sector strike. The strike crippled many services, including passport renewals and immigration, for almost two weeks. 
the Public Service Alliance of Canada has secured a total wage increase of 12.6% over four years. However, some 35,000 tax agency workers are still on strike. Protesters in Paraguay took to the streets to demonstrate against the election results. They were supporters of Paraguayo Cubas, who finished third in the presidential election. Demonstrators blocked roads, burned tires and destroyed billboards of President-elect Santiago Pena. In an Instagram post, Cubas called for a recount and asked his supporters to protest. Australia has banned recreational vaping. The country has also tightened other aspects of the e-cigarette laws. This is Australia's biggest crackdown on the tobacco industry in more than a decade. The aim is to curb a rise in teenage vaping. Vapes are wi widely considered a safer alternative to smoking cigarettes. Australia's federal budget will include over $150 million to protect against the harm caused by tobacco and vaping. The U.S. state of Illinois faced a massive dust storm. Many cars crashed along the Interstate 55 highway. Multiple people were reportedly killed while dozens were injured. Two trucks caught fire. The highway remained closed in both directions for several hours. Environmental groups in the U.S. have sued the Federal Aviation Administration. The groups challenged the approval of expanding rocket launch operations by SpaceX next to a national wildlife refuge in South Texas. The last rocket SpaceX launched exploded over the Gulf of Mexico. However, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk hailed the launch as a qualified success that will yield valuable data. The environmental lawsuit says that the noise and light pollution degraded the area that is home to endangered animals. Police in Paris detained some environment activists. They covered the French Justice Ministry and a hotel with orange paint. The activists protested and raised slogans against the rich. Protesters from Extinction Rebellion also carried out a protest in which they defaced a museum. A climate activist glued his hands to a TV presenter's podium in Geneva, Switzerland. He briefly interrupted a debate which sparked boos and jeers from the crowd. The man's t-shirt read, let's act together. Switzerland's climate policies are a hot political issue this year. In June, Switzerland will hold a referendum on a new climate law. Divers in Croatia have taken it upon themselves to clean up trash around an Adriatic island. Scientists at the Institute of Oceanography and Fisheries say that marine waste is the number one global environmental problem. They said that around 60 to 90 percent of marine waste is plastic. A new survey has found that many Europeans are alarmed by the climate crisis and are willing to take personal steps to combat it, but they aren't keen on bigger steps. A YouGov survey tested whether measures like banning single-use plastics and scrapping fossil fuel cars would be supported. People in the UK, France, Germany, Denmark, Sweden, Spain and Italy responded that they're happy with measures that would not greatly affect the way they lead their lives. The International Monetary Fund's managing director, Kristalina Georgieva, has pointed out further weaknesses in the banking sector. Her comments came after the controversial takeover of First Republic Bank by JP Morgan. She has said that a transition in the interest rates has played a major role in uncovering weakness at certain banks. Georgieva added that the pain in the sector may not be over yet. The International Monetary Fund has also raised the forecast of Asia's economic growth. The IMF expects Asia's economy to expand 4.6% this year. It has said that China and India will be the key drivers, with an expansion of 5.2% and 5.9% respectively. However, the fund cut Asia's growth forecast for 2024 to 4.4%.
the share prices of several U.S. regional banks have fallen. Shares in PNC Financial Services Group and Truist Financial Co. fell between 3 and 7 percent. Valley National Bank Co., which owns Valley National Bank, lost more than 20 percent. This comes after yesterday's takeover of First Republic Bank by J.P. Morgan. The takeover marked the collapse of the third U.S. regional bank within two months. Broadcasting company Vice Media is reportedly prepa preparing to file for bankruptcy. Vice has received interest from five companies for a takeover. As per reports, the company may consider a sale to avoid a formal bankruptcy filing. This comes as other firms in the sector have also resorted to downsizing in recent months. Last month, BuzzFeed said that it would shutter its news division. Financial giant Morgan Stanley is planning to eliminate about 3,000 jobs. The job cuts will be carried out in the next two months. This means that within a span of six months, the company will be carrying out its second round of job cuts. Several companies across sectors have carried out massive job cuts to slash expenses. They have blamed the looming economic downturn for their cost-cutting spree. Technology company IBM is expected to pause hiring for roughly 8,000 roles. These roles will reportedly be replaced by artificial intelligence in the coming years. Hiring will be slowed in back office functions such as human resources. CEO Arvind Krishna has said that 30% of non-customer facing roles could be replaced by AI in five years. The European Union and the US have warned Malaysia against signing a deal with Huawei. The EU and US have warned Malaysia of the security concerns attached to the Chinese company. This comes as Malaysia is finalizing a review of its 5G rollout. This could allow China's Huawei technology to bid for a contract in the country's telecom infrastructure. Samsung is banning its employees from using popular generative AI tools like ChatGPT. This comes after the company discovered that, that its staff has, had uploaded sensitive code to the platform. Earlier in April, Samsung engineers had accidentally leaked internal source code by uploading it to ChatGPT. The Biden administration is planning to study companies' use of surveillance technology. Companies use these technologies to monitor and manage employees. The U.S. President government has said that this United could cause States. a serious no risk Biden. to workers. The White House has sought comments from employees about their experience with these technologies. It, had, it has also asked employers how they develop and use the surveillance technology. Reports suggest that BlackBerry will conduct a review of its business alternatives. This will include a possible strategy to separate one or more of its business units. BlackBerry was founded in 1984 and built pagers at the time. It rose to fame with its iconic QWERTY phones and business smartphones. Last year, the company pulled the plug on its smartphone services. Moving on to sports now, in cricket, Lucknow Super Giants will battle it out with Chennai Super Kings on Wednesday. The match will be at Lucknow's Ekana Stadium. This is a rescheduled game as the match was supposed to be played on May 4th originally. The, both LSG and CSK are coming off defeats from their previous games. LSG lost to RCB in a heated encounter on Monday evening. On the other hand, CSK lost a thrilling close match to PBKS. Lucknow vs Chennai will begin at 3.30 p.m. IST tomorrow. Five-time champions Mumbai will take on an unpredictable Punjab Kings on Wednesday. A win will give MI a much-needed push on the points table. The Mumbai team is currently placed seventh with eight points from eight matches. On the other hand, Punjab Kings are currently sixth in the points table. Both sides are coming off victories in the most recent matches. The match will begin at 7.30 p.m. IST tomorrow. Cricketers Virat Kohli and Gautam Gambhir have been fined 100% of their match fees for breaching the code of conduct. 
the incident occurred during the IPL match between Royal Challengers Bangalore and Lucknow Super Giants on Monday evening. The RCB batter and the LSG team mentor have admitted to the Level 2 offence under Article 2.21 of the IPL Code of Conduct. The All India Football Federation is looking to increase the number of teams in the I-League. It has also received recommendations from its committee to cap the number of registered foreign players in the squad at five. It was also suggested that only three foreigners be allowed in the playing 11. The recommendations were passed during an I-League committee meeting on Monday. FIFA President Gianni Infantino is threatening a blackout in some European major markets. The news comes after Infantino publicly criticised broadcasters for offering too little to screen the Women's Football World Cup. He has warned England, France, Germany, Italy and Spain against not covering the event. Infantino's warning comes less than three months before the Women's World Cup starts in Australia and New Zealand. Liverpool coach Jurgen Klopp risks getting a touchline ban for the team's upcoming key games. The decision comes after Klopp's feud with a referee who is str strongly defended by the Premier League's match officials group. Klopp has already served a one-game ban over his criticism of an assistant referee in October last year. Leicester and Everton remain in serious relegation danger after their thrilling 2 all draw late Monday evening. Leicester have moved out of the bottom three, but only on goal difference, ahead of Leeds and Nottingham Forest. Everton will now play Brighton, Manchester City, Wolverhampton and Bournemouth. On the other hand, Leicester will face Fulham, Liverpool, Newcastle and West Ham in its final four games. Arsenal's manager Mikel Arteta has said that the Gunners are still fired up after their defeat to rivals Manchester City. He added that his side clearly need to improve if they hope to keep their Premier League title hopes alive. Arsenal will face Chelsea in their next match. Currently, Arsenal are second, in pl uh, second place on 75 points, one point behind leader City, who have a game in hand. In Formula One, Mercedes chief Toto Wolff has admitted Ferrari dri uh, driver Charles Leclerc is on his radar. Toto's statement comes as uncertainty over Lewis Hamilton's future with the team continues. Leclerc has established himself as one of the sport's elite drivers. However, reports say Ferrari have repeatedly failed to provide the 25-year-old with a car capable of winning a championship. Meanwhile, seven-time world champion Hamilton's Mercedes contract expires at the end of the current season. Belgium's Luca Bressel has become the first player from mainland Europe to win the snooker world title. He completed a fairy tale fortnight by resisting a Mark Selby fight back to win 1815 at the Crucible. Selby won five successive frames from 16-10 behind before Bressel clinched his first world title with century break. With the resounding victory, Bressel has climbed to number two in world snooker rankings. The fashion world gathered in New York City for the annual Met Gala once again. This year's theme revolved around late fashion icon Karl Lagerfeld. The event included pearls, starched collars and black and white to honour the designer. The invitation-only fundraiser for the Costume Institute at the Metropolitan Museum of Art hosted about 400 guests. Many Asian celebrities walked the red carpet at the Met Gala. Blackpink's Jenny Kim made her highly anticipated debut with an archival pull from the house's fall-winter 1991 runway. GOT7's Jackson Wang and Ki Hu Kwan incorporated elements of Karl Lagerfeld's iconic uniform into their looks. India's Priyanka Chopra Jonas, Alia Bhatt and Isha Ambani brought their A-game to the Met Gala as well. Tennis superstar Serena Williams has revealed that she's expecting her second child. She made the announcement while attending the Met Gala on Monday. Williams also confirmed the happy news on Instagram with the caption, 
was so excited when Anna Winter invited the three of us to the Met Gala. The 23-time Grand Slam champion married Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian in 2017. The couple have a five-year-old daughter, Alexis Olympia Ohanian Jr. The writer's strike was in the mind of some of Hollywood's biggest names during the Met Gala. TV host Jimmy Fallon spoke in favor of writers and meeting their needs and having staff back to work as soon as possible. Fallon said, I need them, I need my writers, I need them real bad. Yeah, I got no show without my writers. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is planning to drop hundreds of subtly different versions of the anticipated superhero movie to theatres. According to media reports, the franchise will be releasing over 600 versions of the um upcoming MCU film. As for the film's makers, the idea of having hundreds of versions readily available to cinemas is to boost the cinematic experience, ensuring no bit of action is missed. Harrison Ford has confirmed that his performance in the upcoming Indiana Jones movie will be the last in the I his last in the iconic franchise. The 80-year-old Hollywood legend took up the role as the daredevil archaeologist in the original movie back in 1981. He has since returned for each of the franchise's installments spanning across four decades. Sidney Chandler has nabbed the first major role in Noah Hawley's upcoming Alien series. The series will be a reinvention of the film franchise rather than a continuation or a total reboot. There is no information regarding who she is playing as plot details are being kept under wraps. Chandler is best known for roles in Pistol and Don't Worry Darling. Fox TV's 911 is moving over to ABC for a seventh season. The news comes as financial model for the uh, broadcasting television shows has come under fire. However, Fox has already renewed the bulk of its uh, scripted roster for the 2023-24 broadcast season. Singer Ed Sheeran has denied copying Marvin Gaye's classic Let's Get It On. It was Sheeran's second day of testifying to, a, to jurors in a copyright trial at the Manhattan Federal Court. He called the copyright claim insulting. Sheeran said he and other performers frequently perform such mashups and rubbished all allegations against him. Vyacheslav Slava Zaitsev has passed away aged 85. He was the designer behind world famous Soviet fashion that was often adorned with colourful Russian folklorif motifs. The French press nicknamed him Red Dior in the 1960s. Among Zaitsev's Russian clients were music stars, actors, socialites and politicians. He also counted the former wife of Pres President Vladimir Putin, Lyudmila, as his client.